prevention is better than cure is the old saying so we're going to try and prevent rather than cure an infested crop <laughs> We're going to have five six meter beds so we're putting posts and netting it it's a netting designed to stop birds the holes in it are small enough to also stop moths but not stop bees now we also get kangaroos that come into this paddock out here uh, we get we get wombats that pass through here and if you don't know what a wombat is uh, you should look it up but basically it's like a giant lump of cement with, arm, uh, with four legs and it will bulldoze through just about anything. The main three things is birds, kangaroos and cabbage moths that we're trying to stop. So we're netting it to begin with because we don't want to go through all the trouble of preparing the beds and planting it out only to have our uh, crops destroyed by cabbage moths of which there are lots and lots in this area Prevention is better than cure is the old saying so we're going to try and prevent Rather than cure an infested crop from the second last hole marker, which is that post the corner post over there we got a measurement of 8,125 mil 8 meters 125 from the string line there over to this post where we've got the hole digger now and we had 8 meters 125 so we're pretty happy that it is reasonably square that's some solid work we've almost done 10 holes these two holes have had multiple layers of of uh, hard rock and clay. One of us has been augering and the other crowbars and then we swap over. We weren't expecting it to be um, you know like layers of, of uh, crushed rock in clay. What do you think Reese? Big day? Big day. <laughs> we were sort of planning on about 10 minutes a hole weren't we? Well Which the first still... hole took 10 minutes. Yeah and that was our trial one. So um, we're thinking what six holes an hour. Yep. The we're ones on. the ones on the back road, the three down on the back road didn't go too bad, and the and the corner two weren't too bad. So that's eight holes done, two half done, two hours. We've had some lunch and we're heading back out. It was pretty hard to get up away from the lunch table. Um, I am feeling it. So a situation update. This is hard going. We did um, we did ten holes before lunch, and we came out to do these last eight. But the constant clay has taken a little toll on the auger. You can see down here where it welds on to the shaft. So we've got a welder, courtesy of a wonderful friend who gifted us a small Azito welder. So we what we don't have is a welding mask. Uh, Reese, how, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate these holes as in terms of degree of difficulty? If 10 is what? Concrete. It's not much weight in that organ. That doesn't help. We seem to go down, I reckon, 200 comfortably. And then we get just layers of rock hard clay. So right now we think to give the wrists a break, we're thinking we might cement the end poles in. Just a, a quick update, I had to go to Home Timber and Hardware, get some six meter plinths because we had calculated wrong by 100 mil. So I don't know where the old man's gone, I think he's trying to get out of doing some work, but I'll walk you through what we've done since I'm packing it up. Thought he might come over now, I've got the camera on. But anyway, we have, I don't know if I can get this angle right, we've got three concreted up at the end there, there are three anchors, and we've got these three concreted in just here. 
plane for the concrete to set and then we'll be able to remove all the little supports and then the ends are done and we have three, six, nine, twelve more posts to get in the ground. Um, we've got six more holes that we need to finish digging. This ground is so stinking hard that we haven't finished it sadly and we also broke the auger a little bit um, so we need to weld that back up but otherwise as my dad likes to say productive day productive day and I think it has been a productive day and my hands are telling me it may be a bit too productive Down here we've been putting in the centre poles, we put the plinths across the top, then kind of line up the centre pole by sight off the other poles, and that gets it very close. Then we're just ramming earth around all these poles, the only ones that are concreted are the ones on the end. Yeah, so we do an eyeball of it across and along the structure, drop a little bit of dirt in around the bottom and that kind of holds the post in place. Then we get a bit more detail with the level uh, that kind of thing get the you know get the verticals correct and then ram the earth in screw the plinths off double screws at the top and that's about it how do you think it's going Rhys? I think that in two days we built all of this I'm pretty happy with that and today wasn't as hardcore as yesterday which is good yeah so I think I could have handled yesterday's hardcore hardcoreness today Overall, it went according to the plan. We just didn't plan on hitting such hard, dry clay that um, that our little auger couldn't get through. So that's it for today. Um, we're hanging up our boots or our hats um, because we're we're pretty spent. Are you spent, Reese? I'm spent. My brain's not working as well. Awesome. Doing those, um, trying to put the sort of anchors on the corner poles is proving a little bit what? tricky. Definitely the cheapest and worst saw that I've ever bought. These two little bits are supports that sit on the end. You can see why I hate it. It was cheap and that's why I bought it because at the time that's all I could afford. Amateurs would be a, um, an overstatement of what we are like when it comes to carpentry skills. Some of the things have worked out good. We are struggling with this. We want to use these poles as a brace because wire is going to come from here over the top centre of this pole up here and then it's gonna travel down the 30 meters and over the top center of the end pole, over the top center of all these poles. So the tension is gonna be on this pole and the one at the far end, and it's going to pull them in. So these stays that we put in these legs are here to provide some reverse tension on the poles. You can see, you know, our finish is not great. We're getting stuck on what some builders might think is a simple thing. Yeah and we're trying to understand how to join it. Two round pieces of wood onto two flat surfaces with a lot of strength up in the top there. And that's tricky for people who aren't used to doing this sort of thing. Together we've been able to sort of work through and get the angles right. It's um, funny watching us try to explain to each other what we're trying to... Yeah, because we don't know any of the terms. <laughs> this is nice and strong. Um, it's really strong. It's, it is over-engineered. We have come up with another hurdle to cross 
because we cut these poles for that end where the plinth was on the outside um, but at this end the plinth is on the inside so there's our problem we've cut all the angles of course so now we've got to cut the top off this recut the angle and set it in because we want it under the plinth uh, we had just a, a little sprinkling of rain earlier so the grass is all wet now that's good that's good because rain is good such is life another beautiful morning out here absolutely glorious so all right let's get to it um i've got two of the posts in uh with the help of my granddaughter oh, she came out this morning gave me a hand so She's down there now admiring our handiwork. One more to do. Then it is ready for the wire straining. There she is checking out her handiwork. There's the two posts up. Those are wonky. She reckons the other posts are wonky. <laughs> like, who doesn't know that? They're not wonky enough to warrant changing. They're going to stay the way they are because they're solid. And that's the main thing. Throws the eye off a little bit. So they're not perfect. But we have to remember this is a veggie garden, it's not a house. Even my granddaughter said that to me yesterday. I'm not building a house, Pop. Yeah, so right now I'm going to chainsaw the tops off the outside posts. The tops of the middle posts are going to stay on because it'll give it a little tented effect. Um, not for any reason other than that, that's about it. There's the supervisor out here, just checking. Measuring, make sure everything matches and should be the way it is. Is it okay? Perfect. Well, perfect. That's a high standard. <laughs> but you know what they say, the job's worth doing. It's worth doing well. That's what my daddy always used to say. Your daddy? My daddy. Oh, how sweet. There's my mechanism so the the tension wire comes down hits this clip here folds back on itself and then that's double stapled in and I bent the end and nailed it into the timber here so it runs across the top because a bird netting is going to hang on that so that will hold the bird netting up and stop it from sagging in between it'll also give us some structure for um, assembling drip lines or whatever we want to put in later on so now down this end it's not as pretty but we made up a little kind of cradle system to put one of these ratchet straps in you just put a 15 mil spanner on that and tension it And just like that, the garden structure was completed rather unceremoniously. We didn't do anything to celebrate. In fact, that just got us ready for the next stage, which is to net the structure. And then we can build the beds because we can't build the beds until it's secure from all the vermin that might raid our goodies. But there's more stories about that coming soon. <laughs> 